Okay, welcome back guys to the clinical diagnosis of malaria. This is part two. In part two, we are going to look at the physical examination of the patient. So, on the assessment, what we are going to do, we are going to assess for temperature, blood pressure, pulse rate, and then respiratory rate. That is TPR and BP. And then we are going to take the weight of the patient. This one will help us to calculate the dose of the antimalarials. Then we will assess for danger signs. And those danger signs are convulsion, unable to eat or drink. Someone is vomiting profusely. Unconsciousness or someone is confused. If someone cannot stand without support and respiratory distress and you can see severe pallor if you assess the eyelid and severe dehydration you know how to assess for dehydration and then severe malnutrition that one will depends on your findings so now if you have already assessed all these signs then what do we do we go to general examination we are going to see the pala edema dehydration and cyanosis this one is the most core which, which if you get this one you have to act fast most especially this 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 one can kill very fast most especially those who are who are pregnant they should not be having those things and then we are going to carefully examine the body system if you remember the sign and symptom in part one most of these things can be resembling, but uh, we will rule them out by examining the body system. We are going to see the ear, nose, and throat for any inflammations. Maybe we will rule tonsillitis and then ear infection when we examine that. And then we have the central nervous system. This one mostly conversion, confusion, and we rule meningitis in this. And then respiratory system. You see if someone is in distress, in fevers, full pneumonia, and then TB, all those ones. And then cardiovascular system, the artery. That's why we are going to take the BP. We are going to see any problem there. Then we see how to manage them. And then abdominal pain, if someone having abdomen. Maybe someone have some surgical conditions and we also rule it out and manage the person according. Then we see the skin. In the skin we will see sign of dehydration from there. We will see if there is wound, edematosis, those ones. Then we are going to examine the musculoskeletal system. In this system we are going to see is the person able to walk. If we can see the then just sign the person cannot sit or stand alone. So we will see, examine further to, to see the causes of it and uh, we manage also accordingly. So this one is the clinical diagnosis of malaria in part two. We do the in-depth investigation, in-depth in physical examination to understand better. And then in the other part also we we'll do the laboratory test to confirm the malaria then we manage accordingly because if you see the integration of management other drugs cannot move with others interaction drug interaction that's why you have to first rule all of most of this thing out then you manage effectively that is all thank you for watching and then see you in the next one